So I just got back from watching the movie Ford vs. Ferrari with my wife and my friend. I thought it was a great movie. Um, the cars were accurate. I think the story of the drivers was excellent. I think it gave them credit for the incredible things that they accomplished. I want to talk about a couple of things that I have to do with Shelby. Obviously, uh, visiting the museum down in Las Vegas was always fun when I get the chance. This is the old museum that they had right by the racetrack. And this was a picture of the day I went with my wife. And there was another blue Mach 1 sitting there. This car was an automatic car with Washington plates. But anyway, it was fun to visit the the showroom there they had this big wall that you could sign your name on and I don't know whatever happened to that wall but all the visitors signed it so it was fun to visit this place and I'm gonna tell you a couple of stories of some of the cars that were there here coming up but I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit of a relationship that my family had with Carol Shelby when I was five years old I was able to meet him and talk to him personally at his house he was really nice to me and I know Carol Shelby had heart problems, and that's depicted in the video uh, very well, but he needed to have a heart transplant, and he gave his spot up several times to other people, and they finally said, this one's for you, it's time to get your, your heart, and uh, so he did. Another really neat thing about that was he donated a lot of money to the Children's Heart Foundation and a lot of his signatures when he'd sign cars he would charge fifty dollars and that money would go to the Children's Heart Foundation. He was a really cool guy, just all around neat person. Uh, that generation is really neat. They were the older, they were the age of my grandpa and uh, a lot of them were World War II veterans and they had started out life totally different than most of us will have to ever um, do anything like they did. I mean, they were just an incredible generation. So I want to give um, some credit there. I really think that the racers in that day were very bold. They were daring. They were passionate about what they did. They weren't in it for the money or the fame. It was just part of who they were, part of their DNA. So I think that's really neat. And that was um, shown very well in the movie. And it's good that they became successful over time. Um, so when I visited him when I was little, um, he had a whole table and it was all of the different medications that he had to take uh, so that the new heart would adapt to his body well and everything. So I remember uh, that. I remember talking to him and he was very nice to me. He told me I could swim in his pool anytime I wanted. We were at his house when I was visiting with him when I was little. And the reason we were at his house was because he purchased that house from my grandfather. Part of the work that needed to be done when they sold the house was it needed to be repainted. And my parents went and painted Shelby's house. So I thought that was really cool. And he had rented it for eight years before he bought the house in Bel Air. And so I was really little. Of course, I, uh, I loved cars at the time, but I didn't know the significance of who he was and the, and the cars he had or anything. But all I can say is, he was good friends with my grandpa. They would talk on the phone once in a while. And he and Carol Shelby was really nice to me the time he did talk to me. And when you're five years old, a lot of times grown-ups don't give you the time of day. They just treat you like a little kid. But he did not. Something really cool was he gave my grandpa this keychain, this Carol Shelby keychain. And he, my grandpa gave it to me and let me have it. And I used to put keys on it and pretend I had a car and things when I was little and so I've misplaced it I can't find it anywhere I don't know whatever happened to it but this is uh, one just like it that's on eBay for seventeen dollars so it's not like it's super rare or super expensive or anything but it was cool because it was a gift from Shelby to my grandpa and my grandpa handed it down to me and I had it somewhere and if I come across it that'll be nice but anyway this is exactly what it was it was this Carol Shelby keychain I used to have it on my backpack and I'd go to elementary school and kids would ask me what it meant and I would tell them and they had no idea who Shelby was but anyway that was really cool and I remember having this keychain with this weird clasp on it and having that um, when I was younger so anyway, I just wanted to talk about that little story and connection of Carol Shelby uh, before I get into some of these other stories. Um, this is the Cobra number one. It was there on display. It had been repainted 
uh, several times because Shelby would take it around and have different um, um, promotions with it and so they thought it was different cars but it was just the same car painted. Now I'm not a Shelby expert and I'm sure there are really great videos out there about uh, the first Cobra. There's there's going to be a ton of Shelby enthusiasts who know way more about this than I do, so I'm not going to try to uh, get into that. And so I do like the AC Cobras, and I love the Daytona Coupe. I, I think they're really cool cars. The 4 GTs, awesome cars. Of course, I'm uh, very, very uh, interested in the Mustangs. I love the original GT350. I really like the white with blue stripes uh, kind of original look on these cars so I was excited to see a bunch of those when I was at the museum and that was that was fun and everything but one of the coolest stories that I have about the old Shelby's was when I was at the museum and I was looking at this dark blue 68 GT500 the cool thing was I believe it was the owner of the car was there talking and he seemed to be someone who knew Shelby pretty well. He was talking to somebody else and he was telling them some stories that were really cool about this car and I was reminded of it as I was watching the movie today because there was a scene towards the end of the movie where um, they're telling Shelby that a couple came in and bought his and her Shelby's and that they wanted Shelby to go down there and talk to him and do the fluff and the sales and just say, hey, this is a great car, you're going to love it, all that stuff. And Shelby was upset in that part of the movie. And he had said to them, he said to the guy who uh, was trying to get him to go down there and talk to the customers, he said, look, they either want the cars or they don't. They're going to buy the car or not. They're, they're buying the car, they're getting what they paid for. You know, he, he didn't want to go down there and try to have some big conversation with them because he wasn't feeling well. Um, in that part of the movie, and I won't spoil it for you for those who had, haven't seen it, but anyway, that reminded me of this car and the story I heard from the owner. So this car was ordered from a guy who was in Vietnam, he was serving in the military, and he really wanted a Shelby. I know a lot of people in the military who are away can look at a car and desire to have one and have it as a goal for something to get when they get back and everything. And that's what was happening with this guy. He wanted a GT500, so he ordered a red GT500. And they shipped it across the country to where he was when he returned, and it was blue. And uh, the guy was like, whoa, whoa, there's a mistake here. And he called Shelby American, and he said, hey, you know, you sent me the wrong car. There's a blue GT500 here. It's not red like I ordered. I ordered a red with white stripes one. And Shelby went over and picked up the phone, and he said one word to the guy. He said, tough. He said, if you want this car, you're going to keep it. If you don't want it, send it back. There are a whole bunch of people who want this car. And so the guy decided to keep it. He knew that they were scarce and that he wouldn't probably find another one. Maybe he would have been able to order another one, but it would have taken time and all his problems. So it's not what the guy ordered, and Shelby didn't care. So I thought that was a really interesting story. And the guy telling the story was really animated and excited, and he said that that owner of the car had it for several years, and he hurt his leg somehow. I think he said he fell off a ladder or something and hurt his leg, which would be his clutch pedal leg. And so he parked the, gar the car in his garage, and it sat there for decades. And this garage was in a part of the United States where it was very humid, but he had a dehumidifier or something that was sitting right next to the car that was constantly running. So the car couldn't have been preserved any better, um, being in what climate it was and everything. So... I always remember that story, and that's one of those things where I was listening to somebody else telling a story to somebody about their car, and I think the owner of the car was able to let his car sit there in the uh, showroom, and for whatever reason, he was there, and I was in the right place, and I got to hear that story, so I thought that was really cool, and I, re I just really wanted to share that story, because I, I tell that to a lot of my friends, and I think it's really neat, but that part of the movie where Carol just didn't care anymore, he's like... They either want it or they don't. I'm not going to fluff. I'm not going to try to persuade people to buy my cars. You know, they're going to buy it if they like it. So that was a really cool story. But anyway, uh, just a quick little 
a video here, and I really wanted to say I like the movie Ford vs. Ferrari. I've been looking forward to seeing it. I had told my friends that I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of my favorite movies. There really aren't a whole lot of movies that come out these days that I'm interested in. Um, very few movies that come out even um, get my attention at all. I, I like car movies. I like YouTube. You know, I, I tell my friends all the time, I would rather watch YouTube than go to the movies or watch TV because I can watch exactly what I'm interested in, whether it's a Terminator, Cobra, Bullet, Mach 1, you know, Coyote, whatever, whatever I like, I can focus in on YouTube, and I think that's really cool. Um, but in this case, it was a movie that I was interested to see. I went and saw it. I think they did a great job. Um, I felt a personal connection there. I felt like fam, you know, like Carol was a family friend, and that um, my legacy with my family growing up in Los Angeles. My parents are from Los Angeles, and I have relatives that settled that whole area. Um, you know, so I I felt a little connection in the video and the movie, and uh, anyway, I just really enjoyed it. So I wanted to share that with everybody, and uh, and just say if you have anything that you're thinking about and put it in the comments share any stories you have I know a lot of people have Shelby cars I I don't have a Shelby you know someone offered to trade me uh, their GT500 for my Terminator once and I just I couldn't do it I I rather have the the Terminator so my heart's where it is but um, the the Shelby cars are really cool and I really like the history behind them as I watched that movie I just thought man there's so much rich history the the loud v8 and shelby and everything and the racing and that's something that um the mustangs have too you know just deep uh, rich heritage with ford and um american muscle and racing and everything and so anyway i hope you enjoyed the video